Welcome to the show. Welcome to Spooky South Coast, where we talk about the paranormal each and every Saturday night. Tonight, we are broadcasting only on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com and on our YouTube channel, on the YouTube app, on the Spooky South Coast app, pretty much everywhere except on WBSM. <laughs> so any other way that you can consume the show, you can get it that way tonight. And uh, we, we were having some issues beforehand, so I'm just going to glance over. Yeah, you know what, Matt? It looks okay. I just look a little red. I don't know if that's if that's the lighting or if that's just me. Do I look red? Like, look at me. Don't look at me on the screen. Look at me in person. Right. Do I look red? Um, it Some, is Christmas time. Sometimes I do. Right. It's a little chilly. Do I look red? Not really. Sometimes I do. You think so? Maybe I have that a, blinding red light on so, on right. the on the vi on the video. Uh, I have a. Uh, a it nice, could be because you have a red background too. A nice glow. Well, that red background is like it's looking kind of neon. It is. It's looking a little strange. See, we can talk about the stuff that's on the YouTube screen when we're YouTube streaming only because right. people are watching it on YouTube. Although it doesn't really make much sense for the podcast audience later on. Right. But maybe that's because we're trying to get them to go and watch what's happening on the YouTube. <laughs> Live. So we are here in the studio. At, bless you. And, uh, <laughs> and so just before, I know that you don't like it when I talk about this stuff because it's like inviting problems to happen. Right. Go ahead, say it now, Stephanie, because you're just going to say it anyway. Mercury's in retrograde. Uh, so <laughs> we were already making jokes about how you were going to say that earlier. It's true, though. And so we are dealing with some internet issues. So we're just going to put that out there ahead of time at the beginning. And we tried to make some adjustments. We have a genius over there with... Uh, right over there, right across oh. from me. We have a genius over there with Matt Costa running all this stuff. So he found a way to make it... Like, literally, we were not going to be able to go on the air. With Can we just say that without him, this show would never work? We say that all the time. Okay. that's We know that to be true. And uh, so he works some magic. And so it might not be the quality that you're always used to, <laughs> but it's, it's there. We're trying. We're trying. It's better than having no show. The planets are not allowing this to happen very easily. I don't know if it's that or if it's the... Uh, it might be the... It might be the... Listen. It might be the, the people... <laughs> that work here more than anything else. However, Mercury affects people and their personalities and their communication as well. Not so. Frank. Not the engineer here, no. No? No, he's just like that anyway. Oh, my God. He does not need any kind of astrological help with... <laughs> or excuses. <laughs> no, it's... A, it, it, we, we, just, we just had some issues with the upload. It, it's been happening all week. So Mercury's been in retrograde since the second. We figured that it was going to be uh, fine tonight with nobody in the studio. With nobody else in the building, mm. you so know what you fun. know what's happening is somewhere in this building somebody's sucking down all the internet upload speed. We right. just don't know where it is. Weird. Yeah. I want to know. I might know. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, mean, goodness. I mean, we have an idea of who would be doing it if somebody was doing it, but we just mm. have no proof. But the question is, what's going on? Like, what are you using it for? Blame the Russians. See, I, I we and, we think uh, we know who might be doing it if somebody is doing it, right. but we don't want to know why he's doing it if he is. Like we don't want to figure it out because it's it's just it's, be bad. it's better not to know. Is what I'm thinking is the case. Well then, like who knows what could be going on? Is there is there a satellite dish on the RV out there? Is there? There might be. That's probably I'm what it say, is. Never mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay out of this. I'm gonna stay over here. Well, anyway, we uh. We are very excited to be here with you tonight. We have, uh, well, Stephanie, you're back after uh, I am. having last week off for a, a, a personal a personal day. You took a personal day. I did. It was my dad's birthday. And, and we uh, had a big party for him. Which you do, you know, every, every year. year. So yep. uh, everything went fine. Yeah, everything was great. You know, I. Um, how old, how yep. old is your dad now? 70. Wow. Yep. I didn't realize that your parents were that old. Yep. Is your mom close to that or? Seven years younger. So, so that's not close. She's still very young. They both, you know, look young, act young. So I don't really think of it as old. So, and you're the oldest child. I am. And you're not even 30 yet. I'm not. So your dad got started late. Yep. Well, they both uh, did their thing, you know, traveled the world, did whatever they could and um, had us later on in life. But I think it made them better parents. So it was, it was, I think... If I had to choose, I'd rather have older parents because I learned a lot. I feel like, you know, people always think I'm so much older than I am, but it's because I had older parents and I, I learned things that n not everybody in my generation really did. 
Well, I think, you know, part of the, the deal with parents is, you know, parents want you to kind of learn from their mistakes. Yeah. And to not make the same mistakes that they do. So when you have an older parent, you know, they're already to the point where they've, they've kind of made some of those mistakes in their life. And they figured right. things out for their own. Yep. So it, it kind of is beneficial uh, in that regard. Now, let me ask you this about your parents. Okay. <laughs> would, would you ever have thought that, you know, they'd have a, a third party in the marriage? Oh, God, no. See? That's what most people would say. And that's how you would expect that most marriages would be. And then we find out some surprising news this week. Yes, we did. We, we will did. get into. That's the... That's the... Uh, see, I know there'd never be a third party in my parents' marriage. No. And no. you know what? Like, they can barely put up with each other. Oh, my God. I think anybody can make that argument in any marriage, really. But I think... Um, no, my, my, my parents are, like, perfect for each other. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, My parents are have always been so open with me about everything and just, you know honest and everything else so no that would have never happened but apparently some people are into that listen and that's fine let's we're gonna get into this tonight and uh, we're gonna talk about about the story that broke this week from the hollywood reporter uh thank you to mama cheryl who yes. brought it to my attention yep and uh, and cheryl is listening is and the best and you know maybe maybe she'll can we just give her in. a quick shout out for the amazing cookies that she oh, made absolutely. all of us absolutely and by the way, we also want to say thank you to Anna, who dropped off candy last week, which I would be more than happy to share with you, except everybody in the building raped it. <gasps> Stop it. Yes. They took was, my candy? There's still some left if you like coconut. I was going to say, um, no, I don't like coconut, but I might have to write a blog about how the employees of Phone 107 stole my candy. There's still, I don't know who did it. Listen. I know Taylor helped himself to a couple pieces. Call Gazelle right now. I don't think Gazelle did it, because <gasps> Gazelle has been shoving all kinds of other things in his mouth this week did you see the video yesterday listen do we want to talk about this on air is this appropriate did you see the see the video that he put up yesterday you know i didn't but i saw a picture but yeah. um you know telling me that he shoved all kinds of things in his mouth does not make me feel very comfortable yeah I mean, last week was but you know what? Uh, shove whatever you want in your mouth just don't, don't shove my candy in your mouth yeah well so anyway there's still <laughs> there's still some candy in there though but there's a lot of it has gone missing why wouldn't you take it home and save it I don't know. Why are you eating on the air? I'm not eating. I'm preventing myself from coughing. That's still... Those are cough drops. I can hear it. That's Would why... you rather me cough or rather... Yeah, I don't know, cough Matt. Drop. You, went to, you went to broadcasting school. What's up? What do you so do in this hard. situation? Um, well, it's not gum, so I can't say dump the gum. Dump the gum, you mope. But... <laughs> she doesn't get that joke. <laughs> that I would we... like to point out... Have you ever heard of lemon water? God. Well, get me some then. Have you, have you, uh, you've heard us men make mention to, uh, of Mr. Hassenfuss, who is the science teacher that the three of, you know, me, my, mm -hmm. myself and Moniz and Matt all had. And uh, you had him, right? You had him as a teacher. And uh, so he was like one of the inspirations for Spooky South Coast mm -hmm. with the stuff that he taught us about the paranormal back in eighth grade science class. But that was one of his classic trademark lines is if you were chewing gum in his class, he would just, he'd hear you chewing like a cow and just look up and be like, Matthew, dump. The gum. And he'd either, he'd call you a mope yep. most of the time, but if it was like the second time he had to tell you, you moron. <laughs> so, great. Um, anyway, sorry, go ahead. I would like to point out that when Anna brought the candy last year, she met up with me and gave me all the candy and I kept it safe in my trunk until I arrived to deliver it to everyone. Here's the problem. It's, it was too candy. big. It's too big. It fit in my trunk and I had a Mustang. Oh, I wasn't going to put it in my car. No, that's, that's, you don't want to know what's in the trunk of my car. And, uh, this is getting weird. When did you have a Mustang last year? Was it last year? Maybe last. I don't know. I don't remember. I had a Mustang two years ago, three years ago. It was a while ago. That you, three years ago. You've been driving tanks for the last couple of years. Tanks. I have been driving tanks. But the. Uh, I don't know. Either way, I kept your damn candy safe. I wanted to put it in a drawer, but there was no drawer that was long enough. You might have to take me on an ice cream date now to make up for this. I, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. I don't know where you can get ice cream anymore. What do you mean? Ice creams getting few and far between around here now can't go to a cushion of creamery no they closed no because gazelle lives there okay so why can't we go because gazelle lives there he puts weird things in his mouth so what <laughs> because it's weird okay you, never go there. you haven't you haven't heard 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 us uh heard all of his uh things well we'll talk about it later okay all right um uh, anyway so the there's still some candy so that's thank you anna for the candy and thank yes. you cheryl for the cookies getting back to this the uh, the story broke this week from the Hollywood Reporter, 
Now, there's a lawsuit going on with the the Conjuring films. Uh, the it, it's it's the the two films already have grossed over a billion dollars. I don't know if that includes the Annabelle movies, if they're including that as part of it, uh, because it is technically kind of part of the franchise. Uh, but there is there's a, a lawsuit that's been going on, and I think it's the same one that was announced in March, where somebody said that the the demonologist uh, was ripped off from him. The book, the demonologist, was ripped off from him. Yeah, so it's anyway. an author and a producer that are suing. So it's it's a multi million dollar lawsuit, and as part of this lawsuit, there's a deposition. Mm -hmm. And I I actually wish I wish I was a little bit more of a, a legal mind to to explain it all to you. But as part of this, you know, they're they're going through the process of. Uh, putting together everything that they need for the lawsuit. And so they find out that through the course of the Warren's marriage, that there was something going on that didn't make it into any of the books. Right. Didn't make it into the movies. Didn't make it into any of the accounts that anybody shared about the Warrens, mm -hmm. which can kind of put it up into your head to say, that maybe this isn't true. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is just somebody trying to go after the Warren's credibility. Mm -hmm. So let's put that caveat out there before we discuss it. This is just what has come about from this litigation. As part of this litigation, there's a sworn deposition from someone named Penny who says that uh, she started having a, quote, amorous relationship with Ed Warren when she was 15 years old and it was with the knowledge and blessing of Lorraine Warren. Correct. So Ed Warren, for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of money to be made being ghost hunters back in the seventies, sixties and seventies when the mm -hmm. Warren started doing this, Ed worked as a bus driver. And apparently when he was working as a bus driver, he encountered this girl at 15 and they, he actually rode his bus. She rode his bus yep. to school. She so he was her bus driver, and so they actually meet each other, and they start this relationship. So this isn't one of those things where you know we're hearing all this stuff about, and this is why this story is, is has spread so much is because of the environment right now with the whole Me Too movement, and with people coming right. out and saying that uh, they've been sexually assaulted, sexually harassed. All those stories are coming out now about celebrities and, and people who were in the public eye. This is not one of those stories. No. This is not somebody who is coming forward and claiming that this is going on, that, that she was uncomfortable with this relationship. This relationship lasted 40 years. She actually, she lived with them for 40 years. We don't know how long the relationship lasted because it's not very clear as to when she moved into their home. Well, at no, what she, age. It, it, she she moved in with them uh, when she was a teenager. Correct. Yes, but you know it might be a little bit more than forty years, is what I'm saying. Well, right. But she was she basically lived. She was basically Ed's partner, yep. according to this, uh, for the rest of his life, from yep. the time that they met until the time that he died. Correct. And she lived in the home with the Warrens. She watched the home when they were out on their different uh, adventures and on their different cases and and what have you. And everybody just kind of thought of her as being the family caretaker. Nobody realized what was going on in this relationship. I believe it said at some point that they tried to push her off as like just a, a young relative or a niece or something. Right. You know how the stories go when yep. somebody moves in and, you know, people are like, it's just easier to say she's a relative. Right, because they don't want to fess up to it. So. It's bizarre. But this is, and now this is something that, by the way, uh, this was known pretty early on in the relationship that this was happening. Right. Because they actually arrested this, this girl, Penny, and they actually booked her on teen, on juvenile delinquency right. for this situation. And she had to go to meetings that Ed would drive her to, according, according to, yep. this, to this litigation. So this is not – I mean, it's, it's a weird situation, but it's not something that this girl was being forced into. It's not something that she was being coerced into. She's not claiming that. No. She's basically just claiming that Ed was essentially married to two people at once. And it, it's it's very clear um, that it was a sexual relationship. 
Yes. Well, um, she she actually became pregnant with his child at one point. Um. Yes, and they persuaded her to have an abortion because they did not want um, the birth of a child to become public or any scandal that um, to have any scandal that would possibly ruin the Warrens' business. So it was very clear that, um, according to this, that Ed and Lorraine Warren were very money driven. Now, the question is already coming up in the chat room. And remember that if you want to ask a question, you can put them in all caps. Uh, so the question is already coming up in the chat room. Why is Penny coming forward with this now? It's actually not now. She She's not coming forward with this. No. She is not seeking any kind of publicity for this. No. She provided this information. In 2014. Right. So this, this information was provided to her, but it's not like she was coming... Uh, it's not like she was the one that was initiating this. This was part of this litigation. This other, yeah. This other legal case, you know, in, in dummy terms, asked her to provide a legal declaration, sworn affidavit, to, you know, just provide information of what her life was like with the Warrens. She did not, like, there's nowhere that she is protesting anything that she took part in. Not one negative word coming from her. We're looking at it as a negative thing because we believe as a society that this information coming out is not appropriate but she lived her life like this this is how she chose to live her life but my my biggest question is why is this information coming out now you know where you might know um i got to almost the, the very end of the article but why is this hitting the media now is it because of everything that's going on with the me too movement and everybody that's being arrested and, well, I'm, I'm and sure looking that, at i'm sure that that's part of the reason why this was brought to the hollywood report right that's what i mean you know why why is it coming out now or is it because of the legal issues that are going on with the conjuring that it just seemed like those two together made a perfect storm and we should discuss this now and leak it out to the media at this point well, but what, what i think it is is i think what happened was is that this was probably provided with the information because I, I first heard about the, the litigation in March. So March of this year is when I first heard mm -hmm. that this author was coming after yep. the, the franchise of The Conjuring, trying to get what they feel is their rightful piece of, of the pie. Mm -hmm. And so my assumption is that this was buried in that. This right. was part of Someone all of that. Someone finally found it. And maybe either somebody knew about it already mm -hmm. and said, you know, we're just going to sit on this story because it's – kind of salacious and we don't yeah. really need to put these details out and and put somebody on the spot like this and then the current climate made it so that that's what they needed to do right but maybe it's also the fact that you know the lawyers that are working on the case called up the hollywood reporter and said hey you know we're we're working on this lawsuit that's going on mm -hmm. you want a scoop and and when i say lawyers i would mean the i would mean the plaintiff and the case right. because obviously it wouldn't do the warren's defense any good to no. to bring this up because if people are saying, why did she come forward? Well, she didn't come forward. No. This information was needed for the litigation because this person was basically like, what if you said, okay, we think Ed and Lorraine Warren are frauds. Now, anybody that's listening out there, and I know there's a lot of mm -hmm. pro-Warren people out there that listen to the show, and I'm not anti-Warren. No. So before you get all up in arms and start calling in and, and, and bitching me out for it, I'm basically saying... You know, here's the, the mindset of what's going on is they're saying if Ed and Lorraine Warren were faking things, if yes. Ed and Lorraine Warren were phonies that were trying to deceive the public in order to make money, mm -hmm. who would know more than this third Person party in their marriage that was there with them for the entire, pretty much the entire duration of their careers? I know. I mean, we've all heard the, the fraud thing before and, you know, working um, in the paranormal field and obviously paranormal media for so long, you know, you hear st stories here and there. I'm, I'm neither pro-Warren or anti-Warren. I feel like I don't know enough and I don't make any type of judgment until I personally meet somebody. And if they haven't done anything wrong to me, I'm not going to say anything. Um, but I think a, a huge problem with the whole fraud issue is a lot of comments out there, especially on social media the last few days, is the movies depict their relationship as perfect and loving and very religious and very, you know, and holier well, than thou type. And, but also that was, that's not something that's just for Hollywood either. That's the way that the that's Warrens presented themselves. That's what I mean. That's themselves. what I was getting to is this is how the Warrens presented themselves. So one could argue that how they were presented in the movie is exactly how they presented themselves in real life. Now, this information coming out, now this, this goes deep into not only the relationship with the 15-year-old girl, 
but the 15 year old girl claiming that um ed was abusive toward uh lorraine right and how they were kind of abusive toward each other at some points and that it was not the nicest relationship at home and you know and the the movies kind of do hint a little bit at that too right i haven't seen them because i hate horror movies right but if they're painting this picture for the public of how perfect they are and how religious they are and they're preaching that to people and at home it's totally different and this is the information that's coming out that does not lend to the credibility of their work and i think that's an issue with some people on social media this week well certainly going to get into that uh, right. throughout the discussion tonight on the show uh, but just and, and we will get into that because we will right. say what does what you do at home have an effect on what your personal uh representation of yourself is in the public eye mm -hmm. and i'm sure we'll argue different sides of that because you can be this you i honestly think you can be this holier than thou pious person in public mm -hmm. and not practice that at home and it doesn't mean that you don't mean what you're saying when you're doing right. it publicly you know you could just be saying that you feel like you like obviously when i say things on the radio yep. and I tell people don't ever do this don't ever do that I might not always obey that myself you know I might tell people don't ever go and trespass into a haunted location but if somebody says to me I can sneak you on there maybe I do it you know like it, it's I think I'm I'm the total, total opposite like a, what you see is what you get with me and I don't have a filter so I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel about anything and I'm gonna live the same way so I um I definitely do put out there what I do at home. I mean, I think, um, God, even I think part of what I do as a medium, um, I put it out there that, you know, life isn't always perfect. And I go through things just like other people do, because I think doing this type of work, people assume that I have a perfect life and people assume that everything is perfect for me and happy. And well, I don't think anybody assumes that because nobody's life is perfect. They do. But it's the same thing as you look at a celebrity and you think their life is perfect. Oh, they have money. They're good looking. They're this and that. So people don't think am about I, them having. Am I not like a regular person? Because I don't think that. I, I look at a person's no, I think celebrity life people... and I say, you know, there's good things to that and there's bad things right. to that. You know, but it's you nice. Don't... It's nice to have enough money to do whatever it is that you need to do. People are so shocked when all these scandals come out of Hollywood, or they're so shocked when you know, so oh, somebody's getting a divorce. You know, I thought they were so perfect. That's a, that's the type of thing I'm I'm um, referring to. Um, but I'm very, you know, I try to be relatable to people. I am who I am. This is what I do. This is what I go through. This is what I've been through. Um, you know, I've been an advocate for a lot of things that I've been through. I've, you know, discussed a lot of things to do with domestic violence, being through that in the past and things like that. So I don't really hide much of my life. Um, but I know some people do. But another thing that this touches upon and what we brought up in the past is the reason why we don't have random paranormal groups on our show and why we don't endorse them is because we don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. Right. We don't know about anything like that. So this kind of lends to that a little bit is you're and going into people's homes and you're doing what you're doing and you're preaching but what are you doing behind closed doors? And we do have a call on the line. We're going to get right to that in a second. Uh, it's a VIP call, so okay. we're going to get right to that. But I just want to, to just make this point real fast as to why this has any, you know, saying whatever people do in their own homes is really their own mm -hmm. business. But this is where it's coming up as kind of an issue to some people is Penny claims in this information that she provided for this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. One of the things that she claims is that she helped Ed with his reputation as a paranormal researcher, including faking the white lady of Easton Correct. from yes. Union Cemetery, which, you know, Jeff Belanger, who's a good friend of ours, personally saw that footage. Ed Warren showed him that footage. Right. And to this day, he will say like that was something that he thought was something that he felt was credible. So if this is what's going on, if there's paranormal fakery being involved and this person Correct. can add information to that, that's where it kind of becomes something that the people want to talk about. Right. But, I mean, well... I was going to say that, you know, people were saying, oh, they were trailblazers either way. It doesn't matter what they did. They were trailblazers for the community. I'm not going to take that away from them. However, if they trailblaze with fraudulent evidence, now what? Right. And we're, we're going to get into all of this and more. But right now we have a guest on the line. So let's go to the phones. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Might, might be a little bit of a delay. Sometimes people listen on the yeah. on the stream. Okay. We'll Hello, wait. are you there? We'll just wait a couple seconds. It'll catch up. We're going to get into all of this and more, but right now we have a guest on the line. So let's go to the phone. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Wow, this is eerie. <laughs> it's like deja vu. Yeah. 
all over again. Well, it was a VIP call, so. It is. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Hello. I thought that was you, Chip. Hello. How are you? I know good. How voice. are you? Very good. I can barely hear you. Oh, see, we just we tried to troubleshoot this problem earlier, and we still couldn't figure it out. How about now? Can you hear us a little better now? Uh, you're very dim, but I can hear you well, very dimly. I'm dim anyway. <laughs> you know that. Well, join the club here. <laughs> How are you, Chip? I'm really good, Stephanie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well. And... You know, this was obviously something that uh, was was near and dear to your heart, Chip, because you've actually had the opportunity to to work with Lorraine, and you've known her for a number of years. I have. She was always very gracious to me and kind. All the interactions that I ever had with Lorraine were very positive and very nice. And this is, you know, we we've had this conversation before, and we've seen, you know, we've had posts about it on social media. What people do in their own lives is kind of their own thing. It doesn't mean that it should be public fodder just because, you know, you're in the public eye. It doesn't mean everything about your life should be for public consumption. I agree with that 100%. I mean, I think we all have things that we wouldn't want to be made public knowledge. The vast majority of us, I would say that that's the truth. You know, there, there are people that do things behind closed doors and in their own private lives that 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 shouldn't be made public it's their own business and nobody else's business so you know i believe that people should just butt their nose out in certain instances and and mind their own business and but does it matter though if this if this person penny is coming forward and saying that she actually helped with the faking of some of the evidence that the warrens build their career on tim we all know that anybody can say anything i mean look at the instances where people on social media have crucified other paranormal investigators and just because you say something is fact doesn't make it fact. You've got to have some backup substantiation to things to actually have some level of proof to prove these things. And you brought up a great point, Chip, that I think is part of this conversation that, that has to be brought forward. And that's, you know, there's a lot of people that see this story come out. They're pointing fingers. They're snickering. They're saying, see, I told you so. Something didn't seem right to me. But you brought up a great point. You know, there's a lot of relationships in the paranormal world where this kind of thing is, is not that uncommon amongst the, the crowd that we hang with. Well, I, I'm of the... the, the thought that people should clean up around their own doorstep before they start trying to clean up around other people's doorsteps. Mm -hmm. You know, once you lead an exemplary, perfect life, then that's great. But to come forward and to have some sort of schadenfreude or, or, or seemingly getting some delight out of the, the, the troubles that someone else is having, that's, that's just not cool. It's gross. I just don't, I, I don't think that that's cool at all. And, and you guys brought up a point earlier that I want to revisit for a second, if I may. Sure. Absolutely. About, about Ed and Lorraine's relationship as depicted in the films that have been done. Um, it's, not, it's not a big secret that every one of the movies that have been based on anything to do with Ed and Lorraine's career have been very, very, very loosely based on reality, on, on the real-life occurrences that happened. Haunting in Connecticut, that wasn't even close to the real story, the movie that came out. The Conjuring and the Annabelle doll. And the Annabelle doll wasn't even part of the Conjuring story, to the best of my knowledge. Right. So Ed and Lorraine's relationship, as it was depicted in the movie, how else are they going to depict him? Are they going to say, oh, he's involved in a polyamorous relationship and bring Penny into the, into the mix? Of course not. They're going to show Ed and Lorraine as the perfect couple that were just the paranormal investigators. That's That's... That's Hollywood, and, and that's the way they're, they're, they're normally going to be depicted. So we can't say that, that, that that's a, a criticism of, uh, of the way Ed and Lorraine were depicted in the movie. Right. I mean, nobody's going to no. try to make a movie where they're going to have, oh, you know, let's have this weird third party in the relationship that's part of <laughs> right. it at home and not explain to the audience what's going on and take away from it. It doesn't matter to the plot of the film, so there's no right. need to have it. It, it's totally cut out. But Chip, what do you think about um, how they depicted themselves in their relationship in public at their lectures and appearances? I think that everyone has a public persona and a private persona. I think that that's, you know, that's pretty common. You know, not everyone wants their whole private life uh, out there for public consumption or for public fodder and to be, to be you know, rife with gossip. I, 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 here's an example. I live with my cousin Kenny, and so many people thought for so many years, because I am a gay man, that cousin Kenny was my code word for my partner in life. Mm -hmm. 
Who? Yeah. No. No, thank you. Cousin Kenny is my dad's sister's son, my cousin. So people assumed that about Kenny. Here's Kenny's story. Kenny, I'll show pictures of him every now and then on social media, but for the most part, Kenny doesn't want to be attached to my professional life. He wants to be more in the background. So I keep him there. I don't tag him on Facebook. I don't tag him on social media. So for that fact, I think there are those of us that keep our private lives mm -hmm. somewhat distant from the public, and, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, Ed and Lorraine, if they wanted to depict themselves as a loving couple, which I do believe for the most part that they were, because I've seen Lorraine myself, when talking about Ed, just break down into tears because she missed him so much. So what somebody else's relationships are like, honestly, you know, we may not know the full story ever. And, and for the most part, I don't know that it's any of our business. Am I right or wrong in that? No, you're, no I agree with you. And, and that's the thing that bothered me uh, for a lot of the comparisons. I mean, we, I don't want to get into all of the stuff about, you know, some of the accusations, but, you know, people who said that uh, Hillary Clinton would not be a good president because she allowed her husband to screw around behind yeah, her back. Well, you crazy. don't know what their relationship was and, and what the situation was and, and how much they valued the necessity to, to stay, uh, you know, only, only tied into each other to remain uh, faithful to each other. Some people don't have that kind of relationship. Some people, right. the bond isn't sexual, or maybe it is, but they also live a little bit more freer than that. But again, you know, whose business is it about anybody else's sex life? Period. No matter right. if you're a politician or you work in the paranormal, or if you're just Joe Schmo on the street, like what you do in your bedroom isn't anybody. Well, it else's gets a little business. different when you're when you're having interns in the Oval well, Office, listen, and listen. that's a different story. But I'm trying to not go political because. Well, I'm I'm just saying, like it's if, just not. If this story came out that Ed Warren was going around to paranormal conventions and, you know, banging paranormal chicks and... Well, if he's know, doing it under the table at then, his, his booth, okay, fine. It's that would be a different story. Let me, let me jump in here office. for a second. We all know that happens. Oh, I know. Oh, no. We all know that happens. I, I don't know, Chip. Don't is, tell I me. I think that any of us that have gone to these events on a lot, in a lot of ways have seen some things that we may, may or may not approve of. But the truth is, it's none of our business and, and we shouldn't... We shouldn't jump to conclusions or become judgmental. I, you know, there's some things that I don't agree with or I'm not cool with, but I just, try to, I just try to stay in my own lane. And getting back to Ed and Lorraine, honestly, I've heard rumblings or rumors in the past about the fact that there was a, a third party in their relationship. But again, it was none of my business. It, I heard about this years ago, but it was none of my business how they formulated their relationship or even if there was a third party it, it just wasn't any of my business so i butted my nose out right and and really it's it doesn't mean that they are any less effective at the work that they do uh it, it doesn't mean that there's any you know i, I just I, I don't see it as a as an easy leap to say well because there's a third party in their marriage they're they're they must be lying about everything that they ever investigated it comes part and parcel with the territory that we are going to be called fakes and frauds. My God, mm -hmm. I've been called a fake and a fraud. I'm sure anybody has who's worked in this paranormal arena or have been accused of faking evidence or, 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 or fabricating stuff. But you bring up a good point there, though, Chip, because doesn't that also mean that now in your regular private life, even though it should be separate, you do always have to think to yourself, there's a possibility that this could be perceived in a way that would hurt my credibility. And it, it changes the way that you do things. All of a sudden, you know, you don't want to, if it just, it kind of limits the way that you want to put yourself out there because you're hyper vigilant of how people are going to look at you. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think that, I think that people have to guard themselves to some degree. Like, I mean, for example, we were hanging out uh, on the cruise, you know, we, we were always, uh, you know, going off to dinner and stuff like that. And people would say, uh, how come, you know, some of the paranormal people go back there and drink? How come some of the people go over there? It's like, well, you kind of have to because the stories will start so easily where mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, I saw them sitting there getting drunk. Really? We had one drink, you know, but it's, it's enough that people just want to gossip. People love to gossip. Hey, I can't take pictures with anybody of the male species without somebody making Oh, we don't even want to so. get into the rumors about you that have been Good going God. around. Well, you know what? Here's the deal. We do have to guard ourselves to some degree because people do like gossip. People do like scandal, as yep. is proven by this story. Absolutely. People do like that stuff. 
they they live off of it. They live off of the drama. And unfortunately, once it hits like a tabloid type media, then it uh it blows up and it's not like I don't think it's any of anybody's business. I think if somebody was getting hurt and it was an unsafe situation for someone, then okay, it'd be a little bit easier to pass some type of judgment, especially if we all knew and respected someone. However, I this agree. happened this happened decades ago. This isn't the, the the poor guy is no longer with us. So, um no matter I mean any type of judgment or opinion or something like that isn't really going to matter because is there's no going back into the past and changing it. <laughs> And you, you bring up a very valid point, Stephanie, and thank you for doing that. You know, for me, this changes nothing about my opinion of Ed, who I never had the opportunity to meet because he had passed away before I, be, I became friends with Lorraine. Mm -hmm. This doesn't change anything about my opinion of them. You know, there was a talk about abuse. Well, you know what? Lots of, lots of, lots of couples have contentious relationships, and they're not proud of it, but it happens in relationships. It really does. So, you know, to bring this out now or for this to come out now as something that's so scandalous lots of people have the same situations perhaps not the polyamorous part of it but lots of people have similar situations so in essence i think the reason i wanted to call in this evening to, is to say my opinion of ed, ed and lorraine hasn't changed i don't know about all their 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 work in the paranormal arena what they what was real and what wasn't but that's that's still going to remain a question mark until proven to be false so my opinion of neither, uh, my opinion hasn't changed about either of them. One one quick question before we let you go, Chip, and and this is something that you've had to deal with for the last couple of years too, is uh, obviously you had a working relationship with Ryan Buell, and he was somebody who had personal issues that came into uh, it came into effect in with his reputation and kind of those who were in orbit around him. But I I want to argue that that situation, and I've seen people kind of make that that correlation, but that situation is different because that was directly affecting people that he was taking ticket money from, that he was uh, conducting investigations yeah. for. I mean, that that was something that kind of bled through into the work that he was doing, and it's, it's certainly not the same type of a situation. It's not the same type of situation. It's a situation where if you take money from someone, and I'm talking totally in general right now, if you take money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, from your fan base mm -hmm. and your supporters, and you don't provide them with what they paid that money for, that's wrong. And it, I'm not a lawyer, but I think it's also criminal. Right. No, you're correct. And and having personal issues going on, I almost used the the word demons, but yeah, you know, but having that. personal issues like he's had go on, you know, that that can have an effect on that situation, and so that does kind of bleed through, and and some. People have but that's that's also a current situation that is happening to people that are living and breathing and existing and you're harming people or doing something wrong to another and you're, you're lying you're cheating you're stealing at that point again there's no correlation with something that happened in the 1970s with a man who is already dead let me say one last thing before we get off the air and this is something that happened to me during the, the, the run of parano or, uh, Paranormal State and Psychic Kids, okay? And I, I don't like getting into this, but I will. I'm a gay man, surprise, and the deal is that during the run of the show, because, during the run of Psychic Kids, because I was working with children, some very nasty SOBs put out the word on social media that I was a pedophile. Oh, God. Oh, God. And nothing could be further from the truth, and, and I love children, but I would never want to harm a child in any way. So I had to get my legal team involved in dealing with this. But once, once some information is out there, it can harm someone mm -hmm. personally, professionally, and financially, no matter whether those allegations are false or true. Once something is out there, it has the potential to damage someone. And I had to squelch those things very quickly because of that fact and at first i was very hurt by those sort of things and then it made me angry and my attorney said you fight back you just go out and you call the people that do these things you stand up and you say you nasty sob you small-minded dirty-minded sob how do you sling accusations at somebody and here's the deal nobody else on that show not, either the straight guy chris fleming who worked on the show None of the ladies that worked as psychologists on the show, and, and, and Karen Russo, who worked on the show, also for, for one or two episodes, none of them had those level, allegations leveled against them. 
it was the gay guy. Mm-hmm. Which is wrong. Well, Chip, we thank you for for calling in and for sharing. Uh, and uh, we definitely want to have you come back sometime in the future, yes, in please. the very near future, so we can talk about way more fun stuff. Absolutely. I would love that. Happy holidays to both of you. And I hope to see both of you very soon. Thank yes, you. Absolutely. Come on with you. Take care. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. That is Chip Coffee, And, uh, of course, everybody knows Chip. Uh, he's the star of if you don't, Psychic you need Kids. To. And he was on Paranormal State. And he's been on Kindred Spirits. And he's just yes, he he's so much fun. And He's always been great to me. But he's also very passionate about things, too. And that's why, you know, when he was talking about this on social media, I reached out to him and said, why don't you pop on and just kind of share some of your thoughts with yep. us. And he was he was ready. He was ready to, to share some stuff, and he brought it. Well, he's never been afraid to share his opinion on any type of topic, whether, you know, it's just simple current events or it's, you know, something to do with the paranormal or just something he feels personally himself. But, um, you know, I applaud him for that because you're not afraid to put yourself out there. And... You know, having him come on, I, when you told me, I thought it was a great idea because he has very valid points and it kind of goes along with, you know, what we were talking about. Earlier. I say we, we create a segment for Chip, yeah, or a semi-regular segment for when things are pissing him off in the paranormal. Oh my goodness. We'll call it Chip on my shoulder with Chip Coffee. Here's what's, here's what's making <laughs> Matt likes it. See? <laughs> I don't know if that was a laugh of he actually likes it or a laugh of groan of like that. Lo- I love it. I love okay. the idea. You love it? Right. Awesome. Yeah. But we definitely will have him come on for a, for no, a that full would be show. Awesome. Because, have we had him on before? No, we never have. Oh, well, then we need to. So that's, we really need to kind of get into his whole story because mm-hmm. it's very fascinating how he, you know, stepped into the public light spotlight right. with doing this stuff and something that he wasn't looking to make it his career and it just kind of took over. Yeah, we, him and I actually had a long talk about that. Um, I met him when he came to Fall River to the Lizzie Borden house to um, film for Kindred Spirits. I met with him for lunch because I just wanted to, to reach out to him and meet him. You know, Amy and Adam love him and um, I think he, you know, he's been in this business long before I have and I felt like he, you know, had been through everything already and um, I could really, you know, relate to him and what he's been through and and learn from him and um, develop a friendship and I was very fortunate to sit down with him and talk and we shared our stories and it was just a great afternoon and um, I'd love to see him again. So I'd love to have him on as well. I, I'm getting a lot of messages Are from you? people, and uh, and and uh, well, first of all, I got one from from Matt saying that we want to we want to thank Professor Eric yes. for the two dollars super. Ch- explain to people, Matt, what what Professor Eric just did. Uh, so super chat is basically if the um, the chat room gets kind of too crazy and, and crowded, which it, at times it it can. Um, you could pay two dollars and uh, have your question or comment. Make sure that uh, we see it. Oh, okay. And that I'm that, a little behind. So that two dollars goes for what? Goes for goes to us for helping with yeah spooky South yep. Coast and for and uh, and Professor Eric helped us out big last week as well. Right. We have it. We have it set up right now, but um, we've never really used it because we're weird about taking money from people. We are. We, we really are <laughs> weird about yeah. taking money. Like you guys we, are weird anyways. We're so kind of broke yeah. and like there's well, things... that's the point of the show, I guess. Right? Like, yeah. you know, it's the end of the year so the website fees come due. Right, and yeah. The podcasting and all that stuff. Like, we, we pay for all this stuff out of our own pocket. So that's why we kind of... We're like the PBS of the paranormal. You know, <laughs> but every we don't have while. an umbrella to give anybody. That's, right, that's, that's, our, that's our problem. We need umbrellas. There, there's no uh, DVD box set for you to enjoy at home. There's no... Uh, well, there's all the free videos and stuff. Right. Right on... YouTube, but yeah, we're 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 pretty much like we're basically panhandlers. We're the paranormal panhandlers, <laughs> and we need your help. We don't we don't stand out of the octopus and get in your way when you're trying to get through the the stoplight. People, so they don't need to. People start don't know what the octopus is. People, look, well, that's true. We are on YouTube, right? But uh, the what? The octopus. Wait, you're f- you grew up in New Bedford. You don't know the octopus? Oh, okay, the octopus. I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? You call it an octopus? Everybody calls yeah. it the octopus. It's a, it's yeah. a sea urchin. What? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You really don't know what we're talking about. For, for the people on the stream, the the octopus, which not the sea urchin. <laughs> it's definitely it's yeah. a, it's just an intersection in uh, New Bedford. The oh, intersection okay. yeah, over by the sea urchin is there. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. there's a store. Okay. Is that a store? No, no, no. no there's... It's a sculpture. Yeah, the sculpture. Oh, is there? Oh. Yeah, you no, don't but... know. I just know the the 
The thing uh, that looks like a bunch of cigars. Cin- I just remember Seagull Cinderella, and that's, no. I'm done with that. No, no, not that. Oh, uh, this has been there for like McGee? literally. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I the forgot we're on YouTube. Yeah. But the but the octopus. It's yes, called the I, octopus because it goes in. Some, well, now. I'm explaining it to them. It, there's it, actually in eight intersect, uh, eight roads. Is there literally yeah. eight? Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's the octopus, and that's where all the panhandlers hang around and jump in front of cars and <laughs> right. ask people for money for donation. Right. And Good uh, old New Bedford. We we were. Uh, in silence. <laughs> uh, no, I'm reading a message. Oh, uh, i got to fix my locks again when I get home. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I did it wrong. Okay. We'll figure that out later. Anyway, I was I was battling the I door. I know you that had a battle today. Wouldn't wouldn't come undone. Uh, so, but uh, getting getting back to this to the story with the Warrens, uh, you know, I think Chip hit it on the head with a lot of people do things behind closed doors that they might not want the whole world to know about. Right. And nobody says that you have to be uh, fully, uh, you don't have to reveal everything about your life fully just because you're in nope. the public eye. You know, I've said forever, and I was going to say this on the air, but I knew Chip had limited time. Um, in the travel that I've done in the past year, I have made reference more than once to being like a zoo animal because people will stand there and stare at you and take pictures of you and just look at you. And that's what I was referencing before is if you're in the public eye, people treat you like you have this perfect life or you're not actually a human. Um, And I think that's that's kind of how people are viewing this story or viewing any of us. And we're just like them, only they get to watch us on TV do our jobs. Um, We don't go into their their work office and stare at them all day. So I think people lose sight of that. And like I said already, what you do with your sex life, I really don't want to know about. I don't really care. But at the same time, you know, if, if there's harm or abuse or, you know, somebody's, you know, not safe or whatever it might be, then it becomes an issue. But where we can't rewind the past and go back to this, then, uh, and, and not having all the facts either, because this is written by a, website that is very similar to tmz so it's just sharing well, i don't know if i'd go no i wouldn't i wouldn't call the hollywood reporter similar to tmz i mean the hollywood reporter is just reporting on stories in the entertainment business yeah, but media is always Ma, i mean mama, mama cheryl's listening she can probably she would probably know better than us because she works in the entertainment industry um but i i mean i wouldn't go so far as to say that you know the hollywood reporter is, is a gossip site it's just reporting on on the business and this, this it, is kind of I mean, there there is no other reason for releasing this information other than gossip. So that's why I related it to um, TMZ. I don't necessarily. I I read I, TMZ. Not necessarily the not necessarily the the case because the, if this story putting this story out creates some uh, buzz for the new movie. Well, that's what I mean. That's gossipy. No, but it, I think the idea behind releasing this information is it puts doubt on the Warrens as being the legitimate owners to this information that is the subject of the lawsuit. So by basically by going out there and putting this out there and, and hurting the reputation of the Warrens, it helps benefit that litigation. But it's still done with mm, terrible intentions. Well, it's still I mean, gossipy and drama. And that's, but that's what everything is released for. Everything's not, released it's, for. It's yucky. Nobody's releasing something because they're like, Hey, we should put this out there as a positive uplifting story of polygamy. No, but that's, I mean, I'm just saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite put the Hollywood Reporter in the same realm as TMZ. <clears throat> TMZ is uh, far more scraping the bottom of the barrel. The Hollywood Reporter has a little more, a little more class. In the end, you're all writing about Hollywood anyway, so <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's not exactly the moral high ground for any of these publications. We have another call coming in, and if you want to call in and share, and I haven't even given out the numbers, 508 996 500 996 Zero, wait, did I do that right? 508-996-0500-877-996-1420. Uh, good evening. You are on Spooky South Coast. Hi, Tim. This is uh, Cameron from Los Angeles. Hey, Cameron. How you doing? Hi, Cameron. Hey. Uh, hey oh, hold, hold on. I want to ask you a question first, Cameron. I'm going to ask you a question first. The Hollywood Reporter. Is it as bad as TMZ? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's actually why I was calling in. You know, I, I don't think it's as bad as TMZ, but I don't think Stephanie is wrong. 
Uh, I mean, both Hollywood Reporter and the other trades, Variety and Deadline, uh, they have agendas. And the agendas I've actually watched transform in the past several months with the Me Too movement, they're getting so much attention and so many clicks from generating gossip scandal that it's becoming a new form of journalism within what were traditional, just professional pages. That's what I'm witnessing. Okay, and Mama Cheryl also uh, chimed in as well. She says the Hollywood Reporter is similar to Daily Variety, a daily, excuse me, a daily entertainment industry newspaper reports on all things applicable to the business. So, yeah. but but I wanted to add this bit of insight that may just you know foster some discussion mm -hmm. uh, very briefly. I mean, what I've witnessed in the past several months, and both of you know that I've been involved in some shows yes. where some of the people have gotten trapped in some of this Me Too stuff, and so I've gotten to see it up very close. And what's happening right now, in my opinion, and one of the big reasons I think the reporter did publish this and it became such a hot issue, uh, is that there is a lot of settling of scores happening within the power structure in Hollywood right now. Uh, and they're using a very real issue of sexual abuse, sexual harassment, all these things for some people behind the scenes to settle a lot of scores. And so I think part of this is a legal strategy we're witnessing revealing this. And part of this is a Hollywood strategy because the success of those films is obviously has competitors at other studios uh, concerned. And so by denigrating the Warrens, there's people that benefit from that. So That's I want to, I want to raise that as something to consider. And there's another issue that I want to raise for you guys to talk about or consider is, in my experience, the very fact that the Warrens present themselves as very religious is something that's a hot button in Hollywood. Uh, in the people that I work with, I mean, as you know, I work as a filmmaker and as a writer, and they tend to be in their private lives very anti-religion. Uh, and particularly anti-Catholicism, uh, and I'm not a Catholic, I'm not even Christian, but I've witnessed this. And so I think a lot of them are getting a lot of shout and try out over this, and are getting a lot of pleasure in using this to attack the concept of the paranormal in general, and the ones in particular. And I do think it's concerning that some of there have been questions raised about the accuracy of some of the, the, the Warren's work, and I think we should explore that. But I just want to bring that to the table for perhaps you guys to discuss a little. There's other things going on here that are very concerning, and I'm witnessing with my eyes. So I think it, you know, we should be careful about the motivations behind some of this story. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for the call. Great, thank you guys. Take right. care. Have thank a great you. Night. Can't wait to see you. All right. And yeah, the Cameron's coming uh, coming up the in the yes. spring. Uh, Matt, do we need Gordon. do we need to do a break? Um, do you want us to do like a break thing so that you can do a little bit? You can make it two parts. All right, so we're gonna take a break. But if you're watching, listening, you know, it's not really a real break, so don't worry about it. We're just gonna we're just gonna pretend like we're taking a break, and, and um, then I'm just gonna run the theme song again. All right, so we'll be right back with more Spooky South Coast coming up in just a minute. And our number two of Spooky South Coast, Tim Weisberg here, along with the Silent Assassin, Matt Costa, and Stephanie Burke. And I'm going to put that back in program, put that back up. Hopefully I didn't miss a commercial. Maybe I did. Doesn't matter. YouTube only, baby. We don't know what's going on on the radio. We can't be <laughs> held responsible. All right, so we're getting back into the discussion here tonight. We're talking about this story from The Hollywood Reporter. War over The Conjuring, the disturbing claims behind a billion-dollar franchise. Cameron brought up a great point. Yes. That the opposing uh, production studios, the, the, the opposing companies that are putting out horror movies who have seen these movies take off and bring in big money. Mm -hmm. Now... There's a reason for that. When you look at the horror landscape, you know, we, we kind of went away from the haunted house stories for a while. Right. And they're starting to come back into vogue. And these conjuring stories have been based on somewhat true stories. Mm -hmm. And that's going to bring eyeballs because people love the possibility of is it true or is it not? And let's be honest here. Let's be fair. Let's put this out there. They're not making these movies for the paranormal audience. No. They're not making these movies for the people who know who Ed and Lorraine Warren are and have studied their work and read their books. Right. And who have investigated and who have hung out with their nephew, John Zaffis, and all these people that are tied. They don't care about. I no. mean, they like taking your money. Right. But it's more about all of these other people mm -hmm. who are out there that don't follow all that. And really couldn't care less if the Warrens have credibility or not. They just right. want to go see a good horror movie. Exactly. And so... You're appealing to the general audience at that point. And it's, we, I mean, we talk about that yep. with TV shows, that that's who they're going after. They're not going after you, the investigator. Right. So if that's the case, if 
that's who they're trying to market these films toward, it doesn't matter if mm-hmm. you can call into question the credibility of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Because in the end, a person that likes horror movies just wants to go and see a good horror movie. Yep. And the believability factor, you know, when they see based on a true story, there's a good portion of the audience that doesn't even bother to take that into account because they just assume that it's BS anyway. Mm-hmm. So that part of it is certainly on the table that, you know, does it even matter if they have credibility for the sake of the film franchise? For the legacy of the Warrens in the paranormal world, that's a different story. That's basically the only, um, you know, place that it's it's hitting hard or it's, you know, a question of, you know, discussion. Because I think, you know, like some people said, they're trailblazers, they're pioneers in the field. And, you know, people are feeling let down or disappointed by the story. But again, the uh, the intention behind putting this out was not a, hey, this is what happened. It was an agenda. All right. Uh, we do have another caller that's trying to call in, uh, but uh, be aware that if you do call in, when you call in tonight, you won't hear us on the phone. You're going to hear what's playing over the radio, which is a football game. So uh, just be aware of that happening. And we, mm-hmm. we'll try and get when we go to the calls, we'll try and get them on the air as quick as we can. Right. So that you don't miss what it is that we're talking about. Uh, but the numbers are 508 996 Eight seven seven nine nine six fourteen twenty. But yeah, I didn't take that into account. That poor chip. That's why he didn't hear us because he was trying to listen on the computer. Right. Because he was getting the game on the phone. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so that's just be aware of that if that's going to happen. But we want you to call in. We want you to chime in. We want you to share your thoughts. We're getting some great calls tonight, and I know that a lot of you out there have opinions. I'm seeing the uh, chat room lighting up yep. with people that are asking questions too. So we'll try and get to some of those as well. Stephanie's trying to monitor that as it goes along. Right. Uh, 508-996-0500. Good evening. You're next on Spooky South Coast. Oh, hi, Tim. <laughs> can, you can hear us okay? Uh, yeah, you're fine. All right. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hang up, but um, I had no idea what was happening. All I heard was a Geico commercial. We didn't know what was <laughs> happening either until you told me. So now, yeah. now we know. Uh, no, the only point that I haven't heard anybody bring up yet is... Um, why they outwardly were were Catholic, like that was something they always always covered. So why, if they were outwardly Catholic, is this not something that should be discussed? Right. I mean, we touched it on a little bit earlier, but it really is part of the big larger question here: is can you, uh, you know, does does it circumvent the message that you're trying to put out there if you're doing this one thing that goes against this belief set that you're supposed to be standing for. Yeah, but that's not just one thing. That's, that's a big, big thing. Especially when, I, I believe I read a while back when they were, they were investigating the Conjuring House, that family was Catholic, and they trusted the Warrens be, because of that, because they shared like a, a, a faith system. Well, so. I mean, there's there's uh, uh, there's also a lot more to that story than than Hollywood presented. Uh, oh, no, no, I know, I know, because I remember watching the movie and falling into this rabbit hole about it, and just going in and I watched the whole documentary that the woman that owns, currently owns the house. But I just I just think that if you're outwardly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're you're basically saying that you are this specific religion that is so strict. And you're using it to make people comfortable and trust you, then it's definitely worth something to discuss because it's it's not just like oh okay well I missed confession, it's you had somebody living in your house for so long, underage or younger I should say, and you were sleeping with them. That that's a big thing. I mean, uh, see, I don't have any belief set in that mind. So in in my mind, like I I don't I can understand your point of it being this affront to the things that you're supposed to be holding dear. But at the same time, like if a Muslim person told me that they had a a BLT for lunch, I wouldn't be like, well, you're just a phony, you know, (laughs) I was going to say ham, but I figured BLT was better. Well, look at, look at all the evangel, the evangel, evangelists. I can't talk tonight. The ones that are, they're building these Mecca Mecca temples in the Midwest. Like, was it Ted Haggard? Is that what his name was? Uh, I, I know that there, this, this has been going on for a long time. It's not even the ones that are doing it now. It's been going on for decades. But yeah, but I mean, if you're going to come out and say, okay, well, this, this is the faith that I practice, and it, it's directly 
related to what I'm doing, like publicly, I, I think it's definitely worth the conversation. It also doesn't help though that the religion gives you an easy out for when you screw up on things like that either, oh, because all you have to do is get me started on Catholicism. Yeah, all you have to do is you know say, oh, I you know I sinned. I'm sorry. I forgive you. God was testing me and I failed, and now He's forgiven me. And you know, it's just you get that easy <laughs> out. So, eh. But, oh my goodness. But that's definitely a great point that you know they're 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 trying yeah, but, to present themselves as something and this is something that kind of breaks down that that whole persona. Exactly. I think that's a huge huge difference between what Chip was talking about and how they took his sexual preferences and, and spun it into something really dark versus these people who kind of came off as pious and they actually did have a dark side. You know, there's a, there's a big, big difference in that. But I agree with him that things, if, if you're doing one thing, like hosting a TV show and working with children, that, that's a whole different subject than what the Warrens did. I believe that people should have their privacy, but if it directly contradicts in such a huge, huge way, then it should probably be discussed. All right. Well, thank you very much for the call. Glad that, it, glad that we worked it out, that, that, you know, you, you didn't think you were calling into the football game. Oh, God, I don't know. It was easier just to text you. <laughs> All right, well, you All have right. a good night. Bye. Take care. And uh, if anybody else wants to call in, 508-996-0500-877-996-1420. I know a lot of you out there listening want to talk about this. Uh, you know, the, the chat room is blowing up. There's a ton of people in there. We have a lot of people watching the show. Uh, so if you want to call in 508-996-0500, one point that that caller made, uh, going back to that, to the point that the caller mm -hmm. made, one thing about those points is what I'm trying to say, is when talking about the religion, re the religious aspect of it, part of what it is that they were doing was operating as demonologists. Right. So it's not just being paranormal investigators. It's being paranormal investigators who can specifically work with these demonic entities. And in doing so, they will tell you that you have to be uh, very firm in your faith and very firm in the foundation of your beliefs to be able to do that. Do you think that you can be firm in that foundation and firm in those beliefs and able to go up against these demonic entities if there is a part of your life or your lifestyle that is incongruous with having that foundation. Your sex life and fighting demons don't matter. Um, but however, no, but, it, but that might be kind of a little bit facetious there. Uh, but look at it from this perspective of if, if you need that firm foundation in your religion, well, could one little thing chip away enough of it? What I'm trying to get at before you started talking again was, bottom line, being born and raised Catholic, being a demonologist is 100% against the Catholic religion. So They they claim that they were doing this doesn't matter. With, the, with the permission of the church. No, they you would never. They just don't, you know, I think, um, I mean, I can say, um, doesn't Amy have a friend that works with the Vatican that does this type of stuff. Um, I can't remember the person's name now, but either way, it's like the one person that's accepted with doing this stuff. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's more now. They, they um, just, they just had a whole influx of, of exorcists uh, in the last couple of years. Being an exorcist and being a demonologist is totally different. I mean, well, yes and no. I mean, you're, you're a according to them. You're a lay demonologist. I mean, you're not somebody that's working within the church. Right. But. Or with the church's blessing. You're supposed to be following the same fundamental principles. Like what I do is 100% against the Catholic religion. Well, of course. Oh, you so, mean you mean the, the psychic medium stuff. Oh. Such a jerk. <laughs> I'm just teasing oh, you. Oh, God. I'm just teasing you. Uh -huh. but, but, I mean, if you, I mean, if you're going to do that work, if you're going to go up against something that is negative right and then let's take the religious aspect out of it but if you're going to go and do battle with demons if demons are real and you're going to go and do battle with them shouldn't you have some degree of the moral high ground shouldn't you have something shouldn't you not do you have to be unflawed 
if that's the case. And I understand no, no I understand is. nobody's unflawed. I understand um, that. But I mean, do you have to not have weaknesses that can be exploited? By your own cause, by your own doing. <laughs> I was going to say, who, who in this world is like that? But this is by your own doing. Right. Um, to Not to cut you off, but Chip and Mama Cheryl just uh, let me know that it's Adam Blay. Oh, yeah, Adam Blay, yep. But, Blay. But there's... Um, but, but there's... See, this is Th- where this it's is, hard. This is tough because you hard can't for me really because, answer that. Well, it's hard for me because I don't believe in anything and I don't... I think a lot of it is kind of you know, just a bunch of man-made rules that people are applying to divine beings and it's not really the case. So I honestly think that if you are, uh, you know, going up against demonic entities, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be pious because it doesn't matter. It's all a bunch of man-made rules. God didn't come down and say you could only have one wife. That was right. not something that God ever said. Listen, I was born and raised Catholic, very religious actually, and I have always said that the Bible is man-made. And so is all Always, of these conceits. Because I'm going to continuously eat meat on Fridays. And I'm if I go to hell, I go to hell. <laughs> but I don't believe that somebody, you know, that God sat down and told me I couldn't do that. Um, I Again, I've told people for years that, you know, doing what I do, being a psychic medium, is against the Catholic religion and everything to do with um, anybody who believes it. But... Why would I have this gift passed down through my family if it wasn't a God-given gift and I wasn't meant to help people? And some people might look at it differently, but I'm not doing any harm with it. So, I mean, religion and this field of religion and anything just do not mix, period. But I, I get what you're saying, but I, it, it's, it's one of those things that are never going to be resolved. Let's get to the point of <clears throat> this idea that, okay... We've, we've kind of established, and, and this is also my belief, but that, you know, what the Warrens were doing at home was their business. Just like if, you know, if there was physical abuse between them. Yes. And which is part of what's being claimed here. Is it good? No, it's not good. No. But no, does that awful. mean, but can you say because one might have smacked the other one around or, and we don't know exactly what happened. There's... There's different yeah. things that happen in people's relationships. Some people's relationships are, are physical like that. I know plenty of men and say, women. Honestly, I think I know people that are, are happily married and do that type of thing. Right. I'm, I don't agree with it, but whatever. It's right. not my life. But sometimes they just they just go after each other yep. and, you know, and, you know, there's... I don't necessarily hang out with them, but right. and I know of people. Doesn't mean that we think that it's right, but whatever. Right. It's but there. again, you know, is it a personal belief or is it what society that's, tells you you need to believe? That's... But that's different than somebody coming to you and saying, I'm being abused. You know, Correct. Being absolutely. abused is different. That's something that you're not. Again, I told you I've, I've been through that. In. So I know. But but if you're. No, I, I'm trying to clarify what I'm saying. Right. So that nobody thinks I'm pro abuse. Uh, but uh, that being said, you know, some people are just like, no, when we get pissed off, we just beat the crap out of each other and move on. Mm-hmm. And some people's relationship that works. So uh, maybe that has something to do with with that. The thing that bothers me about this is mm-hmm. that Penny says that she's being manipulated to some degree. Mm-hmm. And she's also saying that she took part in manipulations. So she's saying that they wanted her to try to portray herself as a victim. They wanted her to say that Ed raped her. They mm-hmm. wanted to say that she was not a willing participant in this. Well, but then- I'm sure because it has to do with the nature of the legal situation and it would benefit the, the, legal team if she said those things but it also uh you know she's willing to put up the information Mm -hmm. saying that she helped fake some of these paranormal claims which i find to be disturbing especially where it's not if she was coming after them Mm -hmm. and she had a reason to want to go after them and discredit them then it would be easy to say we had this relationship that I wasn't, you know, that mm-hmm. I was 15 years old and I didn't think that it was appropriate. And in today's world, people would give her the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. People would still look at it and say, why would you stay for 40 I was years? Say that that's the part that doesn't make sense is why would you live there for 40 years? Because, you know, but, whether or not. OK, one can argue she was a stupid child. Right. You know, we've all done stupid things in our teenage years. I know I have. And um, at the same time. 
you hit a certain point where you're in the driver's seat. Whether, whatever you were taught or whatever you went through, you're an adult. You make right. your own decisions. One of the comments so, I saw was Stockholm Syndrome. This was not right. Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, but it's okay. Like, if you're Penny, you can say, listen, I loved Ed Warren. Right. Maybe she loved Lorraine, too. And maybe, yep. you know, and she can say, I was a fully yes. willing participant in this relationship. However, it was still wrong of Ed to start it with me when I was 15. He should have waited till I was legally. But I honestly do not think that she thought that. I think no, that I she was either. happy and content in this situation. She went willingly. She lived with him willingly. Um, obviously, Lorraine was aware of her presence that was in her home she knew what was happening this clearly states on this page that i'm looking at right now that one night he would sleep downstairs and another night he would sleep upstairs and if they were happy like that then they were happy like that one could also argue that maybe all of the information wasn't there because this is not coming from lorraine's side and looking at it from a legal point of view or you know a different point of view or as a victim of domestic violence maybe ed was not the person everybody thought we were, and he was controlling the rain as well, and she had to go along with this for her own safety. We don't know. It's possible. You know what I mean? But and Penny might not have been aware of that. But my 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 point is that you know Penny could have, uh, and, and we can argue whether or not we want to say you know right. telling the truth or not. But she could have turned the circumstances in a way that portrayed the Warrens negatively. Right. She did not. You know, honestly, I would like to see an actual copy of the affidavit myself. I'm, I'm sure that that's somewhere where you Be, can I was thinking it. about that on my drive over here because, you know, an article done by any type of media is well, going to be twisted no matter what. Well, maybe might have to wait until the case is settled. Correct. But you will be able but, to see it. The, th- you know, this is, this is just portraying bits and pieces, which we all know because we've all read media. You work in media that things can be portrayed as an agenda. Bottom line for, for anybody. It doesn't matter. It can be twisted. You can take quotes and people are misquoted daily. You know what I mean? If I read an actual legal document that was, you know, signed, sent to court, whatever it might be, that is totally 100% different than what this article might be. So well, I, mean, not I take always. that. It, it, depends. it depends on what information is included and, right. and how it's entered But into it's the not record, always perfect. But, but, but that would be. My, my, my bigger point here is, though, is that she could have turned that scandalous aspect of it mm-hmm. uh, into more of a negative if she had a reason to attack them. I don't think that she was going after them in any way. I don't think she was trying to hurt no. them in any way or hurt their reputation. So the point of that being is she brings up this paranormal fakery. Right. And so I don't think that that information is being shared as a way to discredit the Warrens either. I don't think she's trying to break down whatever it is. I mean, if you lived with somebody for 40 years, you probably were pretty, you know, you're probably a pretty big fan of them. Yeah. You probably like them as people. You probably don't want to destroy their reputation. Yep. So for her to come out and say... You know, I I helped in faking some of this paranormal evidence Mm -hmm. is something that is disturbing. Now, you brought up the point where, you know, we don't know if Lorraine went along with this, if if Lorraine was, uh, you know, forced into the situation. And but this is something that is very, uh, very telling about this situation. And I'm going to I'm going to read this verbatim from the story. Okay. so this is coming from the Hollywood Reporter story. But Lorraine seems to have been intent on preventing any sordid aspects of her story from being portrayed on screen. Her deal with New Line to serve as a consultant on or model for The Conjuring includes unusual restrictions. Mm -hmm. The films couldn't show her or her husband engaging in crimes, including sex with minors, child pornography, prostitution, or sexual assault. Neither the husband nor wife could be depicted as participating in an extramarital sexual relationship. Talent attorney Jill Smith says she has never seen specific language barring such depictions, though individuals individual selling rights to their stories sometimes restrict portrayals. So this information is put into the contract that these things are specifically mentioned. And it's like one of those situations where you say, well, wait a minute, why are you bringing this up? We didn't bring this up. Why are right. you talking child pornography in, 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 in sexual situation? Why are you talking about this? Because nobody brought that up. Right. So what's the point? It's 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 a, it sets alarms off when you yes, want to put it time, into that. If you still look at it from a victim point of view, maybe she just didn't want people to know about what she went through, or maybe she was involved and she didn't want people to know that either. We don't know, but it, that is bizarre. But again, do we know if that's standard or not? Unless we've signed that contract ourselves, or we are familiar with that type of contract. I'm going to put it in all mine from now on. Okay. So John Brightman, if you're listening. Right now, nobody, <laughs> nobody can depict me as having sex with minors because that's horrifying. I never have, and horrifying. that would be really weird. But I, you know, and I also do. 
take issue with the idea that uh, this somehow hurts their relationship. Like, that's not our... You can say what you want about does it hurt their reputation. You Mm -hmm. can say what you want. Does it hurt their uh, standing in the paranormal community? And we can discuss and debate all of that. We can't say that this makes you think that maybe they didn't love each other based on this because you don't know the nature of that relationship. And it's quite possible that you can love somebody and have a relationship with another party involved and it's fine with everybody. It it happens. Now, I, it's weird, but it happens. Cheryl just messaged me and said it's not standard, but she has seen it in life story contracts. Where those specific things yes. mentioned. So that's... Uh, so then I wonder if those people that had it mentioned also would have reason to have it mentioned. I don't know. You know, it's 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 something we can't answer. Was it the uh, was it the Roy Moore biography film? Was that one oh of those? Oh my god. So just to give you some ideas, okay? This is what we're talking about when we're talking about this story. Th- this this is a great quote by the way. This uh This comes from uh, one of the attorneys who specializes in legal clearance for productions. I do think the public understands that based on means that some liberties with storytelling have been taken, says attorney Lincoln Banlow, who specializes in legal clearance for productions. It's a less enjoyable film if the ghost hunters are a bunch of assholes no one likes. You have to have your protagonist be likable. And that's a huge part of every based on a true story movie. They try to make all these people out to be heroes, and a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are, or or they're very flawed, tragic heroes if they are. Because they're, you you don't want to portray that in there. You don't want to portray the the fallibilities of your hero unless it's something that plays into the story. Otherwise, you look at it and say, why are you mentioning that? That doesn't seem to fit into the story that you're trying to tell. So... You know, it, it it wouldn't be something that you would have be part of the script. Nobody would ever say, "Oh, and just let's let's just have a scene for no reason where all of a sudden we show Ed and Lorraine at home and Penny just comes out of her room and sits on Ed's lap." Mm-hmm. And let's not even explain who Penny is. Let's just let it happen and and then just you know make the audience wonder. Like they don't do that. That no. isn't part of storytelling. No, it wouldn't make any sense. But here's the heart of this all. The Conjuring comes out 2013, 318 million. One of the biggest mm-hmm. horror films of all time. Annabelle comes out a year later, 257 million. The Conjuring 2 comes out 2016, 320 million, and then Annabelle Creation comes out this year, 306 million. Mhm. If not for those numbers, I don't think we ever hear this story. No. Because this lawsuit wouldn't have been filed against them. Right. And then we wouldn't have the information that that Penny put in there. Mhm. So uh, for people that are wondering, this comes from the Hollywood Reporter story. Uh, There's filmmakers could easily. I'm just going to read this part, too. Filmmakers could easily argue that the relationship is not material to the story and justify sticking with the happy Hollywood version. So what if people believe they have a good relationship, says an attorney? If I were to, if I were in this mix and the filmmakers knew all about this other woman, I don't think I'd tell them what was necessary to make changes or adjust the story because it doesn't fit the narrative of what you're trying to tell. Right. But anyway, so for Penny now in her seventies, it seems she has never received a cent from the conjuring movies. Well, why would she mm-hmm. though? She clearly has no love for Lorraine. She still seems to have fond feelings for Ed though. Their relationship ended in 2003 and she subsequently married. She remained friendly with Ed until his death in 2006. She still seems to be pondering her past and wondering about Lorraine's role as well as her own. As I'm older now, I can't even fathom why Lorraine let me stay there, she said in an October recording. Lots of times I think about, why did I do this? Why did I screw my life up like this? Sometimes I get angry thinking about it, how so much was taken away from me. So that is... It doesn't make sense. But that is the only part of this story Mm -hmm. that is an attack on the Warrens. Right. For her to say that she felt like she wasted those years of her life. Again... Why'd you stay for that long? That's a long time to stay. A long time. But. If you're unhappy. Also. A very long time. That means you got married in your 60s. Correct. 
That's or, I was just doing the math 50s. myself in, in my head. And um, you still remain friendly with Ed after that. Right. But to say that you, what she said about Lorraine doesn't make any sense because you lived in her home. Oh, no. I think you can live in somebody's house and not like them. Uh, no, that's, that's just weird. Go get your own house. Well, there's also a difference, too, of, you know, if you, if, put it this way, if you like somebody and you want to stay with them and part of that condition is that you have to live with somebody that you don't like maybe you stay with that person that you don't like yeah i don't know what happens the big question here though and i want to i want to bring this back to what we were talking about with chip Mm -hmm. and this is where we get super gossipy which is all right because we can do that from time to time but there's a lot of kettles calling each other black this week Agreed. There's a lot of people posting the story and sharing it and snickering and laughing behind their hands and pointing out, see, I told you so about the Warrens, Mm -hmm. when what the Warrens did is not, I mean, okay, let's face it, (laughs) let's let's, let's back it up a little bit. Not everybody has a third person living in their house for 40 years. Right. That's a little bit of an extreme situation. Yes. But there's a lot of people that are in this world, people who are out on the road, people mm-hmm. who are going to these conventions. There's kind of, there's a lot of hall passes that are giving in the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes there's hall passes given. Sometimes people don't realize that they signed a hall pass that they didn't know that they signed. If you get what I'm saying. Sometimes people have the okay. Sometimes people are doing it behind people's backs. I was going to say, hold on. <laughs> Let, let's get a little bit more specific here because so, you're losing me. So there is, but there is a great deal of this going on. Now, listen, I'm not a dentist. I'm not, uh, you know, an electronic salesman. I'm not, uh, what else? Who else gets to, uh, any other profession or any other hobby or interest that has conventions and get togethers and all that. I'm not involved in any of those worlds. So I can't tell you if this is something that goes on at a lot of these things. I imagine that to some degree it does. I imagine that, you know, we we always saw, you know, the the TV shows growing up and, uh, you know, where the, the, the... father is going off to some convention and the mother's worried about what he's going to be doing when they're gone. You know, like those, these storylines exist. These things happen. Right. But it does seem to be more prevalent in the world that we are in. Now, is it more prevalent or is it just because we know about it? That's the question that I'm asking. Okay. Is this far worse than, I mean, we have people in the chat room and people that are listening to the show that are part of other worlds that are beyond the paranormal and mm-hmm. might be able to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm a dentist and every time, every year we go to this dental convention in Chicago. Maybe and they're it's, wild. It's well known that <laughs> during these conventions, it's nothing but hookups. <laughs> right. Um, so maybe that's possible, but I do think that the social aspect of the paranormal world plays into this to some degree. I don't know. I honestly, I mean, I've made jokes for years that the paranormal was full of people that didn't have any friends in high school because they're all a bunch of bullies, but I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but the, the basic idea is there's a lot of folks that are in this because it was it's there it's where they found found acceptance correct um but it doesn't i don't know maybe i maybe it is you know more prevalent here maybe it's not but um i think there's there's going to be a lot going on at any convention or any you know particular uh industry group or entertainment group or whatever it might be it, you know paranormal people can't be the only one and i can say i went to a lot of conventions this year and i honestly stayed to myself for the most part unless I was contracted to go somewhere so I can't I'm not the best um at uh you know providing you know insider scooper information for this sort of stuff but I have heard a lot of stories over the years and from very trusted sources and I know you know things do go on and things do happen but let people be who they are and do their own thing it doesn't really affect your life Unless it does, for some weird reason. There, I mean, there is a lot of um, a lot of resentment mm-hmm. toward people like the Warrens because they had a spotlight. Yes, and, but you know what? That goes for anybody in the spotlight. There's a resentment well, against them. I can't tell you the crap I've dealt with lately because. But the question but is, it, they put themselves in correct. that spotlight. So, well, you know what though? 
is this a you know a situation where you probably you know you the whole glass houses thing I'm I'm thinking right now of how I want to respond to this because in a way, yes, it is. If you're forcing yourself out there and you want it so badly, then okay, fine. But I can speak for myself when I say that I was not actively seeking this and was not looking to become famous and caring about the fortune. And I have had things thrown my way that I didn't deserve at all. And that had nothing to do with me. It, it had to do with the people that I surround myself with, or it has to do with people that are representing me or whatever it might be. And that stuff's not fair because I haven't done anything, but try to help people with their grief. So it depends. It, no, I think it depends on who you are in the situation, big, but there's a big difference. I mean, if you look back at the Warren's career or just like, like, like what Chip they said, did. Chip, Chip is out doing the same thing that I'm doing. And he had horrible things said about him, which he did not deserve and were not warranted whatsoever. And it's, didn't even it's, apply. It's still different. And I'm trying to explain how it is different. First of all, this era is different. Mm -hmm. So this era is we live in a time now when people are looking for, you know, enter, you know, mm -hmm. news stories, television shows, magazine articles, what have you. Any type of 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 lens is looking for people that are in the paranormal. Mm -hmm. It's a different story in the 1970s when you are, you know, basically contacting media outlets and saying, hey, come see what it is that we do. Mm -hmm. And you invite, see, it, it's kind of a hard thing because in some ways, a lot of people that are involved in the paranormal, they do invite it. They're saying like, I want, I want to get on TV. I want to do this. I want to do that. But the, 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 the climate has already been created for them to jump into that. Mm -hmm. This was different. This was somebody that was coming out and saying, hey, come and look at me. Come and see what it is that I'm doing. It's really right. cool and different and unique. And, you know, should you be drawing that attention to yourself if you're basically going to be living a lie? How many people do we know that do that? Right. But you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about back then. It's, it's, it's two different things in my mind well, only because there's a saturation of it now. Right. So there's people that want that content. There's people that want that, that story to tell. Right. And there's people that want to consume that story. Well, we also didn't have social media back then either. Also though, like social media is kind of everybody saying, look at me. Mm -hmm. It's, it's totally different when you're contacting, you know, who, and I, I'm not, going to pretend to to know off the top of my head who it was they were reaching out to but they were reaching out to people they're putting themselves into right. these situations and then calling the media mm -hmm. like you know the conjuring 2 for anybody that saw it it's it's dealing with the the enfield poltergeist case but it wasn't ed and lorraine warren that were the people that were the key figures in that case they just had a very passing happenstance in that case right but it was, you know, a headline story that they went and kind of inserted themselves into. And so there was a lot of that in their day. You know, Amityville is a perfect case of that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't their story to tell, but they put themselves into that story. So are you leaning toward the argument that they may have asked for it? I'm putting into or the... Or should have been aware that it... it I'm it saying, happens. like, if you're going to be into that position, maybe at some point you say, maybe that girl should move out. Mm, okay. Like, maybe you say... But... Like I said to Chip, you know, you have to be careful of what it is that you're doing. And maybe at some point they should have said, let's evaluate what's going on here. Well, it sounds like from this article that they had the perfect excuse that she was just a relative or a niece that was staying and watching the house and all of this stuff. So I think that they probably had them they thought they had themselves covered and i also believe you know that this stuff was happening and this was going on and it's no different than today the only difference is we do have the internet we do have you know smartphones and everything else and the information flow is is much quicker than it was back then you know just it's the same thing as you know people saying oh you know crime wasn't bad back then no it was it just meant that it didn't make the news as quick as it does now and and that's one of the things that uh is the other part of this is in that time period, in that era, you could live with this secret and not have it get exposed. Mm -hmm. You know, they talked about how the family knows, the family knew, right? their daughter knew, their son-in-law knew. 
I don't want to speculate about other people knowing. That's just right. You know, I mean, the the question is out there. You know, the, the I'm I'm sure it's popping into people's heads because John Zaffis was their nephew and and worked with them. But I'm not pretending to even know what he thinks. I did reach out to him to see if he wanted to come on. Yep. Uh, but he 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 didn't get back to me. So, um. But at least in the story, it mentions the sparrows knowing. Mm-hmm. So. But the, they didn't know the situation. They thought that it was just that they took her in and she was part of the family. Yep. According to what's in the story. So maybe that's what their thought process was, is that that's how it would be portrayed. And you know what? Maybe that's what the relationship was to them. Maybe that's the way that they looked at the relationship. Maybe they looked at it as we have this young girl that we took in and lives with us and is part of our family. And, you know, just her and Ed have a different type of a bond right but you still have to know the optics of it you still have to know how it's going to look to people and so then maybe you say hey at some point we should maybe you should go get an apartment Ed can go visit you at his apartment but i don't know do you think that adds a little like validity to their side of the story what do you mean if i mean if um because like that would be like an obvious choice for for people to be like uh we're kind of a big deal now and it's we're in the public light maybe you shouldn't move maybe you shouldn't live here maybe you should move out like does that uh the fact that they didn't ask her to move do you think that adds to like their story of like she was we were just helping this girl out right you saying that if they they basically didn't see anything wrong right so right. I don't know. I don't, because she's coming out and claiming, Penny's coming out and claiming that there was that sexual relationship, then that makes me worry. Now, I, uh, again, uh, I didn't read the story. I, I would have to read the story again to kind of find this out. But at some point, I'm assuming her and Ed stopped sleeping together. And if that happened relatively early, then it's quite possible that she just became part of the family and that that part of their life was over. You know, and, and, and that's a possibility. That's the, true. We could, I could certainly see that happen. That's, that's a lot of marriages. A lot of marriages get to that point, you know, when people reach a certain stage in their marriage or a certain age and, and, and that part of their life no longer becomes part of what it is that they do. It doesn't mean that they love each other any less. It doesn't mean that they don't want to stay with each other and be in each other's company. It just means that's no longer part of the equation. And so, I don't know, maybe that is, again... The, the basis of this all is that what went on in their home is none of our business. Right. But what they decided to do outside of their home is what is fair game. And it's where we can say, well, you know, right. does this cast... The, the bottom line is, you know, and, and, and we kind of touched on this a little bit with Chip, you have to understand when you do this kind of work that people are going to always be looking for a way to expose you as being a fraud and you really can't give them any inch to make that argument no. with. And I think that that's a lesson that needs to be learned across the entire paranormal world. Yes. Because you want to cry and, 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 and bitch about credibility, but then you're going to constantly do things to undermine your own credibility. Right. And that's where, you know, that that's kind of the, the morality lesson that we can take out of all of this is, you know, it's not just about whether or not you should have a third party in your marriage. It's really about, do you have to hold yourself in a higher regard if you're doing this work? And is that fair? Is it fair that you have to? Because I think that you, A, do have to hold yourself in a higher regard, and B, it sucks that you do. Because nobody says that a dentist is a shitty dentist if they find out that he was cheating on his wife. Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect how he how he was able to work on your teeth. You might not like him as a person. You might not choose to go see him anymore because you don't agree with his values, but it doesn't mean that he was bad at being a dentist. Just like the same thing with politicians that are getting accused of all this stuff. If it's true, it doesn't mean that they were bad politicians. It just means that they were bad people. And you might choose to say, I don't want bad people representing me and that's fine. And you're totally allowed to have that opinion. But that also doesn't mean, you know, people look at Ted Kennedy. And they talk about how Ted Kennedy was nothing but a dirty philanderer and all mm-hmm. this stuff. But 
people that liked his politics will say he was a damn good senator and he did a lot of good in the time that he was there. So right. just because he was a, a shitty person doesn't mean that he was a shitty senator. Correct. And I, you, you kind of, it's almost like it's... A, <laughs> I think people are just so quick to judge and pass blame or whatever because it makes them feel better about all the mistakes that they've made themselves or it makes them feel better about themselves in general or it just takes the heat off of things that they've done and it's it's just silly. And it's also uh, a false morality in a lot of ways. It's also a an unnecessary morality too in a lot of ways because mm -hmm. you're putting these uh, restrictions on other people that might not have to do with their belief set. Just because you believe it doesn't mean that they have to believe it. And I, I honestly think that this whole idea of being polyamorous is the, the, the phraseology for it. Yep. But I don't think that that makes you a bad person. Again, what they do behind closed doors in their bedroom doesn't make you well, a good or a bad person. Let's just say it was completely public. Let's just say that they made no bones about it. And they went out on tour together and it's like, hi, I'm Ed. This is my wife, Lorraine, and this is my girlfriend, Penny. Yep. And so then it's now it's something that's out there in the public. It's not their own private lives. It's something. And maybe Ed's saying, you know, we go out and we battle demons, but we think it's okay to mm -hmm. have an extra partner in your relationship. And it's all out there. Like it, be, because your morality says that it's wrong, it, doesn't mean that it's wrong no i mean totally unrelated but let's talk about a very popular book that was i don't know if i can say the name of it or not that came out within the last few years that was made into you know a movie series where it completely you know praised a man for controlling a woman in a sexual sense the entire book was all about that and women across the country across the world were going insane are you talking about 50 shades of yes. crap yes i don't know right. if i was allowed to say it on air and i'll say 50 YouTube. shades of crap or because that's what i call it because it's a crap but, book not that i read it but. if you start reading into it and you start looking at it you know all these women were so i i personally i've read excerpts i have not read the book but to me i just didn't have any interest in it um but it, all these women are you know going insane over what was being described in the book but what was being described in the book can also be looked at as abuse why are we okay with that but not okay with well, i didn't i didn't think i didn't have money then it would be abuse. exactly i didn't i didn't <laughs> exactly i didn't read the if book he wasn't rich but was the um, i didn't read the book but was the protagonist not a willing party to what was going on um it was it was like a business deal like she she mm. accepted but so again, like because pretty he, woman, but with a ball gag, he, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, and more gerbils, oh my God. But again, it, you know, he, he came across as, you know, he has this glamorous life and, um, it, it just, again, like Matt said, if he didn't have money, it would be, he, the, the dude would be in jail for what he did. But you know, we, we praised that as a society. And that, well, I, that's I mean, kind of ridiculous. I thought it was terrible. No, I, I didn't either, but... I thought the whole phenomena around it was terrible. Right. But women went nuts for it. So why is that okay, but a situation like this See, is my, news? My argument was kind of a, a different take on it. My argument was, if that was a book that was written by a man for other men to read, yes. women would think it was filth and pornography. Oh, absolutely. Agreed. So if I had that book, and it wasn't this phenomena around women and, and what yep. have you if, but if i had that book and you know my wife came home and found it she'd probably be pissed that yep. i had it and i think that that's unfair right everything should be looked at for what it is you know like and, and I, I i'm not not to, to to talk about my relationship here but mm -hmm. I, I there's there's a double standard where some you know you might be i'm gonna look at matt in this because he's a guy All right. you might be sitting at home <laughs> watching like Cinemax right. after dark or, you know, I've heard of it. Yeah, I don't do that. Or a movie <laughs> or, or, you know, you're Red, watching a movie. Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah. A show or a movie that has some sexual <laughs> graphic content in it. And right. then your significant other comes into the room and is like, what are you watching? And, you know, basically tries to make you feel bad for what it is that you're watching. 
But then you go into the room and it's, you know, a lesbian prison scene in Orange is the New Black or, you know, some incest scene on Game of Thrones. And you say, mm. what are you watching? And like, what? This is this is good. This is a good show that everybody watches. This is art. I, right. might, <laughs> I might be different, but uh, I I wouldn't give a shit. I think this is, this is the difference weird is that you guys are swearing because every time I'm every time you swear I'm like <gasps> I I, <laughs> I think the difference is if you actually put your hand in your pants mm -hmm. that makes it pornography. You think so? If there yeah. are pants in, involved, I think yeah, I think. But that's the thing is like <laughs> if I'm watching TV, my hand is probably in my pants anyway. You do the Al Bundy. I'm, what is Al happening, Bundy, dude? What's going on right now? Don't show me pictures. Right? I was going to say, why are we no, showing you that? Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you can show that to... Uh, the, uh, the Al Bundy screensaver. Al, Al, Al Bundy is my hero. Well, That's good great. to know. Good to know. See, um, to... You're a member of No Man. I am. But... <laughs> That's, I think that's the difference. Is I think that if you, you know, if you can watch it and restrain yourself, then it's art. But if you watch it and you're like, hmm, I think I want to... Uh... Stop it. <laughs> uh, dim, the lights, only... dim the lights a little, lim light I'm a couple only... candles. Nah, you just put on a blanket. <laughs> I'm, just, uh, I'm, I'm just taking advantage of the YouTube here to go too far. That's all. Right, right, right. Just push it while it's there, right? So, but uh, anyway, we've... we've fallen off track which we we stayed surprisingly on track for most of the show so i'm gonna we didn't talk about food yet i'm gonna snacks. call that a feather in our cap well we're not going to yet because okay. i i do want to talk about one other thing sex. i want to talk about one other thing no, that's come up in the no? last couple no. of weeks why like what like a sandwich like pizza pizza and sex why not before or after a, a sex pizza it doesn't matter I think it does. She, she, <laughs> does it? She's right, just mad because she's just mad because she thought that the DME was coming in with pizza, so that's why. Yeah. She got pizza I I happen to like pizza, but okay, now now we have to discuss it. Why not pizza before sex or after sex? Well, for no, one, we're talking like, about during. Food is fine, but he just said before and after. So, he said before, before or after, after, and I said, does it matter? And he said, yes. Why does it matter? Well, I mean, it depends on how greasy the pizza is. Do okay. You greasy fingers. Well, pizza also gives you pizza farts too, so. Up, so <laughs> not before definitely after mm -hmm. that solves the greasiness problem and the farting because apparently you get the pizza farts great right awesome yeah. <laughs> no i think incorporating food into it is a different story but okay food before or after i'm i'm not gonna argue with that that's mm -hmm. fine pizza it doesn't matter what it is i mean i would prefer not pizza okay but just because <laughs> then what? what what's your choice it's like kind of like one of those things it doesn't really kind of go with what happened you know pizza's kind of like more a, like a calzone would be more sensual <laughs> like a nice like a nice sub <laughs> okay a nice sub a nice tuna sub <laughs> would be like a foot long tuna sub a, a big bear sandwich right with, i think that would be good <laughs> with plenty of whipped cream on it no my my thought process <laughs> is that pizza is more of like a you know, like grabbing a quick bite to eat uh -huh. or, well, you, you need know, fuel. Yeah, no, it's, it's anyway, that's a whole different thing. We only have a few minutes left because even though we're on YouTube, we're going to try and stick to the clock to some degree. I want to ask you about this other story that's popped up in the last couple of weeks. And it's similar to what we're talking about here <laughs> where it's, it's somebody <coughs> who's in the public eye mm -hmm. and their personal life has become fodder for uh, people and that's I'm, I'm talking about Teresa Caputo and this whole story that broke over the last couple of weeks where apparently and for those who don't know and, and I really don't know that much about her but she's the Long Island medium yep and uh, the story goes now her husband is part of the show He's, yes because I see people that have taken pictures with him and stuff and and he, he looks really douchey so I'm assuming that he must be on TV because like people shouldn't look that way although he does live on Long Island <laughs> that's a little dig at our Long Island friends but he you know this guy is part of the show. So he's in the public eye too. And their marriage was part of the show, right? That was yep. something that was discussed. So now the story comes out this week or the last couple of weeks where they're <laughs> separating. Yes. Another story came out. I believe it was a separate story mm -hmm. that was, uh, that there's a, an investigator who has been investigating her yep. and has deemed her to be a fraud, mm -hmm. which every time an investigator deems something to be fake, I think obviously, you know, they must know exactly what they're talking about. But he says facetiously. But those two stories kind of come out at the same time. So a lot of people are putting those two together. pieces together where right. they don't necessarily go together. So 
I was a fan of the show at one point. I don't have time for TV anymore, but I watched it for a very long time. Her husband was a big part of the show because it was based around her family life as well. He wasn't really douchey. He kept to himself and he was quiet for the most part, um, but he was very supportive of everything that she did, more so than her children. Her, her children kind of came across as douchey um, and like, you know, mom's embarrassing us type deal. Um, those two articles did come out very close together, um, which I don't believe was fair. And I know you and I have had many discussions on our opinions as to that article and the supposed investigator. That article was so poorly written, it wasn't even funny. I think I think we have another call. I here. know, that's let's, why I, I paused. Let's, let's just take this call real fast. Okay. Uh, good evening, you're on Spooky South Coast. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, am I on the air? You yes. are, yes. Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing quite all right. Is there a question uh, or or something a point uh, something that we're talking about? That I'm sorry, you're a bit quiet, but it's okay. Um, okay, I'll. Have... Oh no! I'm sorry. It's our phones. I'm sorry. It's it's just the phones really low. I apologize. Oh, okay, I'm kind of new to the stream, so that's quite okay. I, mean, I, I do. I do have comments that I uh, want to say. Do you have a question and for us or a point about what we were talking about? I'm sorry. I said, do you have a question for us or a comment about anything that we were discussing? Um, yeah, I have something I want to say. Okay. Regarding psychological and uh, neurological deficiencies and how it relates to free will. Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You're on your... You're on the air. The floor is yours. All right. So pretty much there are those who uh, suffer psychologically and emotionally from neurological and or genetic deficiencies, but it changes nothing. Sure, they inherited a bad hand and are not to blame, but it's I don't view it as being much different from a short guy wanting a date and not being to blame for it. And in the long view of things, it kind of relates to free will, how no one in a deterministic sense really chooses their position in life. Okay. So that, so what, in, in relation to what we've been discussing tonight. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I think we'll leave it there. That's a good way to end it. I'm not. What I just happened? I wasn't following. Okay. But we're, we're out of time. And it wasn't on point on topic of what we were discussing. Okay. So, and you know me. I don't usually hang up on people, but. I was gonna, did, did you just do that? I did more just because I, <laughs> I was just thinking that we were going down a path that was not where we wanted to go with seven minutes left in the show. Okay. Or three I, minutes I, now. I got to be honest with you. I thought it might have been one of our prank callers. Um, but uh, back to the topic of discussion with Teresa. Where where do you want to go with that? Because that might well, be I just, more than the I seven just, minutes we have. I just wanted to bring up the fact that... Uh, that is, first of all, like you said, it's not something that was, right. those stories weren't connected. Yep. Uh, she's not, her husband did not decide to leave her because of this story exposing her as a fraud. No. I'm pretty sure if she was a fraud, he would have known before the, any kind of the The show was actually following the problems that they were having for quite some time. So this was not a surprise or anything. I mean, they just showed an episode where she broke down crying in the middle of her um, her reading because the reading was relating to her issues with her husband and it just it broke her down um so it's something that she was very open with and very raw about and very emotional about and because that became part of the show yes now that is something that is public fodder correct because they chose to make it that way yep and she agreed to it not the way i would go <laughs> if i was on tv no but. i mean but at the same time, it, it doesn't discredit her. I don't think it takes away from any type of gift that she has. Um, I have seen her live. I have my own opinion, you know, which I, I was open with on your Facebook page that there's no reason to call her a fraud. Um, I know people that I consider mentors are friends with her. Um, so, and you know who I'm talking about. He mentioned her on our show. Um, so... I just don't see why we need to attack her. And every single point that that stupid article made about the investigation, you know, about her and, and her gifts and everything else was every single point that someone that is ignorant to what a medium does for a living would make as a point for somebody being a fraud. It's I'm, just silly. 
I'm going to try and squeeze in one more call here and we'll see where it's going. I actually, I thought about something Mm -hmm. while um, you were talking Mm -hmm. and I wonder because I can't hear what's on the radio right now. Yep. That call might have been in relation to what's on the the air. Okay. And it might not have fit into our, that's why it didn't fit into the conversation that we were having. Okay. So we'll just go back. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Hello. Am I on the air? Yes, you are. All right. Do you do you have uh, something to say? We only got a few minutes left, so if you want to make a point, I'd do it pretty quickly. Yeah, so about the allegations and all of that that's been going on in today's time, um, where do you stand on that? On the just the idea in general of the allegations or specific allegations? Like, just without the proof, just all that, like, hashtag me too and all the things going on in today's media where do we stand personally well i do i do think that you have to anybody that's willing to come out and say that they're a victim you have to at least be willing to listen to what they're saying Uh, but i also think that there has to be some proof to that too you just can't make baseless claims and not kind of provide some just your word alone although it should be enough unfortunately it isn't so you need to have a, a little bit more of something to back that up. And in terms of the case that we're talking about tonight with the Warrens, you know, we can talk about this information of what happened because that was something that was submitted in an affidavit as part of a, of a lawsuit separate from these instances. He hung up on uh, No, we're still here. Maybe, maybe you couldn't hear our response. Hello? I don't know. This is getting weird. This is like where it's kind of the point. This is like where it's, they're kind of just saying you guys should wrap up the show. But just to be fair, we didn't. I hung up on that person now because they weren't replying, but I did not hang up on anybody. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. However, um, we could probably cover the, the Teresa Caputo story in an entire show. And I got to write that blog for you, too. But. Well, I just I just want to bring it up. Were you going to say something, Matt? Or do you? Okay. I think he's trying to check out to see what's going on. I just wanted to, to bring that up and, um, you know, just kind of clarify. Because, again, like we we just said that for we just spent two hours talking about how what happened in the Warrens' home was their business and shouldn't affect, you know, should it affect the way people see their work? We're asking that question and kind of likening it to the Teresa Caputo situation. That's different because they chose to put all of that personal stuff out there for people to consume and pass judgment on. So there is, there is some difference to that. Uh, but certainly we can discuss it again in the future. Right. We'll be back next Saturday night for another show. It'll be our pre Christmas show because it's two days before Christmas. So, you know, if Santa Claus wants to join us, that's good. Last year we had Jesus. So my God, I forgot about that. Speaking of Jesus, I got one more weird story to share with you in the audience before we go tonight. So we've mentioned this before, I think, on the air, that in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, which is where the spooky studio is located, it's where we broadcast from, Mm -hmm. in Fairhaven, we have a guy known as Fairhaven Jesus. Yes, we do. His name is Mel. He dresses up as Jesus, complete with the crown of thorns, and he walks up and down one of the main roads in Fairhaven, and people beep, and he waves, and he's got a staff, and he prays with people, and people take pictures with him and everything, and he's out there. He was, he was a guy who had some trouble in his life and he ended up in jail. And when he was in jail, God talked to him and God told him to go out and and do this. So he does. Interestingly enough, when Fairhaven Jesus leaves Fairhaven for the winter, he goes down to Florida. Correct. And where does he go in Florida? Fort Myers. The town that Chris Balzano lives in. Mm -hmm. The guy who is, you know, synonymous with Spooky South Coast for all these years. So that was kind of an odd connection, I thought, that that Fairhaven Jesus, of all the places he could go, he goes to Chris Balzano's. Now, I know Fort Myers is a big destination point, but still, just seems really weird. So yesterday, Balzano reaches out to me (laughs) and says, hey, that guy that's on your radio station from 10 to 12, what's his name? So Brian Thomas, Brian the cab Mm -hmm. driver, as a lot of listeners know him as. Yeah. I think his son works at the school that I work at. So I Brian's here. So I go into Brian's office and I say, Brian, where's your son teaching these days? Because I know mm-hmm. his son's a teacher. And he says, well, you know, he was on the Cape, but now he's he's down in Florida. Mm-hmm. 
And I mentioned the name of the school, and he says, yeah, <laughs> Judo. And I said, Chris Balzano, mm -hmm. longtime content director and contributor to Spooky South Coast, works with him at the same school. How odd is that? Very. So Fairhaven Jesus, Brian's son. Very odd. There's, there's some sort of weird connection. And Chris told me, and I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but he's discovered some odd paranormal things down his way that he's starting to research and he's going to report on to us at some cool. point. So. so fall on a ley line? Maybe. Maybe, Maybe we're on the same right. ley line. Hmm. That would make that would make sense why the uh yeah. why the Red Sox chose that as their spring training home and why so many people go down there in the summer. Either that or just because it was, you know, a nice destination. And what's even weirder is now the New Bedford Airport has a flight that goes to Vero Beach, which is not that far from Fort Myers. It's like a half an hour out, I think, or something like right. that. Right. So all those weird seconds. could get even weirder. It's just following the Leyland. <laughs> it's following the Leyland. All right. So we will be back next week with another show. Uh, until then, for Matt, for Matt, for Stephanie, I'm Tim. We want you all to stay spooktacular. <laughs>